Hi everyone, in this week's episode, we'll be covering how to plan and research for a photography trip. And I got some exciting news. Me and a friend are headed to Yosemite. It'll be the first time and I am jazzed up. So I wanna share with you some of the tips that I use to plan out these trips so that you can be at the right place at the right time, ultimately making better photography. So join me as I go through some tips, some techniques that you can use to plan ahead of time, learning some history, and all that stuff. We'll cover all, all the things that can help you better plan your trip. So let's get into it and let's go. So one of the most important tips for planning a trip is scouting. Now, what do you do if you've never been to a location? How can you then scout? Well, that's where the wonderful world of our digital age comes into play. I like to call it virtual scouting. And this is where we obviously use uh, tools such as Google Maps, Google Earth, and an assortment of other tools that we will cover in this video. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the studio and cover some of these tips. <laughs> wow, it worked. I'm not getting this anymore. Hey, let's go. All right, with Google Maps open, I searched for a ton of you and it brought up these results here. Now, the first thing I like to do is turn on layers, the satellite layer. So if you hold down your command key or control key on a Windows, this magical thing starts to happen. Look at this. This is just fantastic. So I'm just using my Wacom stylus or mouse. Hold down your command or control key and you can just go ahead and explore to your heart's content. It's just really, really uh, powerful feature. And we're just gonna soar right down this valley. And as we do, we're going to see points start popping up. And at different angles and tilt angles, you'll see different highlights. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, El Cap, the Cathedral Rocks, Half Dome. Now, if I, um, here we go, if I start tilting, you immediately start seeing different points of, of, um, of interest showing up here. Um, and, you, and again, you're getting another, another view of the, of the valley floor or the location in general. So uh, this is uh, something I use quite often when I am researching uh, an area like this because it really gives you a sense of place and um, a good, good feel um, for, for the land. So we're just going to spin this around and look west down the valley. So here's Glacier Point, for example. Um, unfortunately, it is closed this year, the road going up to it, and it's about a four mile uh, hike to get up here, a little bit over four miles. In fact, this is the, um, the road, and in fact, it even says closed winters, but I checked on the Yosemite uh, website, and unfortunately, they're doing a lot of repairs. So uh, my friend Mark and I will be taking, if this is on our list, if we, if we make it, it's a very strenuous hike, and it's about four and a half miles to hike up to uh, Glacier Point. But as you can see, uh, you can quickly get a really good feel. It's, uh, and I'm on a 32 inch monitor, so this is just, it's about as close as you're gonna get to, you know, really experiencing uh, being, at the, being at the helm here and just uh, really researching. So uh, again, this is something I, I highly recommend you do um, with, your, with your, your photography. You can even try and compose some shots if you like. You know, that's limited, but if we, uh, we zoom down here into Glacier Point, you can use uh, Street View, which is the next thing I want to get into anyway. So let me just get this at a bird's eye view, looking straight down. Let's get over Glacier Point. And with Google Maps, if you go into Street View, if you click or tap on an area, if you see this little street view icon pop up in the center, that means that there is street view data for this area. Simply click on it, we will zoom, zoom in, and we are now in the Glacier Point area. Another cool thing that I find is if you get lost in navigation, if you click on this uh, box down here, and oops, sorry about that. If you click on the lower section, you can now get a overview of the map overview of exactly where your little pig guy is with an arrow indicating what direction you're facing. So in this case, I'm facing the direction I want to go, which is right here. So if I just start going in that area, let's see, let's get up here. You see the guy jump to that area. So here we are. This is where we wanted to be. And now you can um, 
you can sort of begin to get an idea of how you may want to, you know, photograph this 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 area. Um, obviously, this is with a wide-angle lens, but we can zoom in and maybe get a, a better feel for what it might look like on a telephoto. But again, you know, you can really just play with the stuff a lot and just get a, a really good idea of what you want to do. So that's um, that's a, just a quick overview of using Google Maps. One last thing I would like to say is while you're in here, after you do a search, you have some photos at your disposal. So let's just click on that. And you can see there's over 5,000 photos. You can get, most of these are not professional photos, but a lot of times you'll get a really good feel of um, some of the highlights and, and different perspectives that people have uh, made with their with their, their cameras. You'll catch a few uh, professional photos here and there, um, but nonetheless, it's it's not a bad place to start. You can quickly scroll scroll through these to get some 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 inspiration, and and then from here, um, what many of us photographers do. I'm not going to cover it because it's covered pretty well. Uh, on YouTube, but uh, 500px is the place that many of us landscape photographers go to uh, really get inspired by uh, by landscape um, landscape photography for particular areas. They just do a really good job at it. So, um, so I highly recommend checking that out for more inspiration. So, yeah, good place for for getting uh, getting your research done. So here is. The Sunsever app is now opened, and I'm going to go up here in the top right and choose search. And we're going to search for tunnel view. It's a good place to start, isn't it? Can't be that. Getting into the area I want to be, I'm going to hit my map icon, and I will go to satellite, which is going to look exactly like what we've seen when we were using the desktop version of Google Maps. And this is Google Maps right now in Sun Surveyor. As you can see, this is the parking lot area. You see the Google Maps um, street icon view? That lets us know if there's data, if there's street data for the area. So for example, if I scroll over here, no street view here at all. But if I move back over to the parking lot, watch how that icon pops back up. Let's see. There we go. So we know that there is street view data here. All right. So if I tap on that, that brings us into street view. And now we have the power of Google Street View with Sun Severe's overlay of celestial objects. And if I scroll down at the bottom here, this timeline, we can see exactly where our events are going to be. Right above the timeline, you can see it gives you a quick reference on this day that the sun will rise at 5.42 a.m. Uh, we can slide these back and forth. We can see what time the moon set will be, moon rise. Let's see, this is our sun's path right here in the yellow. And if I slide this line, we can see that our sun starts to rise right in this general area right here. So if I hit the, uh, the little clock down here, all right, so let's say that uh, you're planning a trip in October. So we can uh, go to October 24th, so done. And now what we're going to find is that uh, if we look down here at the sunrise, in fact, let's switch over to an easier panel. Sunrise is now 715, but you see the yellow? Now the sun is rising over here. So there's quite a difference. And having this ability to overlay this on a map is just really, really pretty cool. Now there are other map, there are there are other mobile apps that have features, um, the live view features, and, and we can do that here too if we want and we can go into live view. So if you're on location, you know, now you can look, you know, we're in my <laughs> we're in my studio here, but uh, you know we're looking at the Milky Way, but you know you can quickly just um, overlay you know your your um, your celestial objects and find out where they're gonna rise and where they're gonna set such and such you know I, I know that in this direction here you know my son is going to go ahead and set so um, that's a nice feature but being able to virtual scout with a map with a street view map um, not too um, not too accessible in most of the in most of the apps that that I'm, I'm aware of so this is just a uh, fantastic feature to use for your for your planning and your trips this next tip can be make or break for your trip it's all about knowing when to go and I say this because depending on what you're going for or if you had something in mind that you really wanted to shoot you need to know when those events happen and in what season they happen so for Yosemite for example if you're going really to shoot the waterfalls um, you need to know what time of year to go there because by the time summer comes 
these gorgeous waterfalls are, are dried up and there's nothing but a trickle. So you, you'd want to plan that out for, for the springtime. And such is the case for me and my friend Mark. Uh, we, you know, we are going in, in June where we, you know, it's still, it's still springtime and these waterfalls will still be pretty, uh, pretty robust at that point, you know, they'll be flowing pretty well. I mean, I haven't, this would be my first trip to Yosemite, but from the research I've done, autumn in Yosemite is just beautiful. That will have to be a, another trip for another time. But it's important to know and to plan out your trip according to what it is uh, you want to shoot. All right, I want to talk about another tip that is very often overlooked and that is doing your research and your history. Knowing a place, its history, or any other useful information. Learn about your subject or the location you're going. And the other thing too is to, if, if you can find videos on YouTube um, about rangers sharing information about the park or the location you're going, um, this stuff is very, very helpful for not only helping you research, but also learning what to pack, what not to pack, and to understand some of the vitalities of some of these trips you might be taking, some of these hikes, for example. Um, you know, Half Dome comes to mind, for example. Uh, I know there's a YouTube video of a ranger who's given the essentials you need to successfully do this trip. I think she mentioned something like having four liters of water in order to do the Half Dome hike, and it's a full day. So it, it's, it's imperative to know some of this stuff. You know, it could make or break your trip and your experience. And uh, at the end of the day, this is all about the experience anyway. So um, learning as much as you can about a park is, is very important. Um, in my case, I'm researching a lot about John Muir right now and his history and uh, the significance of him meeting with Roosevelt and, and how this changed uh, the preservation of the Yosemite Park. Uh, and of course there's Ansel Adams, right? I mean, I, I, I just I love Ansel Adams myself and so I'm really looking forward to seeing his museum and, uh, and just learning uh, even more than what I know to uh, try and understand his love of that land and, and how he just made such an impact on the world because of it. Having this information and this historic value can really help you make better choices in the field uh, as far as how you point your lens and uh, how you decide to tell your story because it, there's an emotional value to it. All right, let's talk about park congestion. Now, Yosemite is a perfect example. This is a busy park. I mean, millions of people each year visit Yosemite. So it is very, very difficult. The logistics get really hard. One of the things my, my friend Mark and I are doing is uh, we're gonna have bikes, we're gonna have pedal bikes to, to get around some of these locations. And whether that will work or not, we'll, we'll see. But it's one of the things that we planned and baked into our planning. Uh, just a, another plan to try and offset, counterbalance some of this time. So we'll see how that works out. But it's uh, it's something we're both uh, pretty excited about because we think we can we can get around a little bit better. I mean, time for us landscape photographers is probably one of the most valuable things because you know we need to be on location at the right time so it's it's very important to understand uh, getting around the park your logistics your narration understanding routes and understanding traffic congestion all right so i hope this video was informative and that you picked up a few tips for your planning and uh you know it's going to be a great year we have a lot of that rough stuff behind us so get out there travel and get out there and shoot Huh, nice dragonfly. Well, you can scout through virtual tools. All right. Understanding what the light is hot that's seen. Urgh. These are essential tools and research to do your... Uh, All right, so that's that. <laughs>